What happens to food when an animal eats it? Does it disappear? Does it turn into something else? What's happening here at the macroscopic, microscopic, and nanoscopic scales? Let's recall what these terms mean. Something that's macroscopic is something big enough to see with the naked eye. For instance, this bunny. Something that's microscopic is something so small that you need a microscope to see it. Cells are a good example. And something that's nanoscopic is something so small that even a microscope can't see it. So atoms and molecules would be an example of something that's nanoscopic. So what's happening at these different scales when an animal eats? Let's refine our goal for this video. We want to be able to model what happens at the macroscopic scale when an animal eats food. Now, to investigate what happens when an animal eats food, we need an animal. Now, that's a little too big. Still too big. Too stingy. Too bitey. Too prickly. Too endangered. Oh, this is perfect. We use an animal called a mealworm. Mealworms are insects, and they're actually baby beetles. And what's great about mealworms is that they're small and cheap, they're easy to take care of, they're widely available, and they're also really easy to observe. They have a front end and a back end, three pairs of legs, and a digestive system that's not too different than ours. Pet supply stores sell them as reptile food. If you watched our series on ethanol burning, you might remember that there are some valuable tools we can use when we do investigations. One of these is bromothymol blue. BTB is green when neutral, blue when basic, and yellow when acidic. Carbon dioxide from your breath is one of the things that will make BTB turn acidic. We can use BTB to address what we call the matter change question. What do changes in chemical properties such as pH indicate about what chemicals are present? The other tool we have is a scale, and this can be used to precisely measure changes in mass and we can use our scale to address what we'll call the matter movement question. How do changes in mass indicate where atoms and molecules are moving? Remember that the goal of this video is to model at the macroscopic scale what happens when an animal eats. How can we use our mealworms and these tools to figure out what happens? Take a moment to pause the video and use your imagination to figure out how we can use these tools to investigate what happens when the mealworms eat. Let's talk about what we could do with our mealworms. If we're trying to figure out what happens when an animal eats food, then we might as well feed them. We can try recording their mass before and after they eat using our scale. And we can use our BTB to determine any chemical changes in the environment as the worms eat and live. This might even help us figure out what they breathe or if there are other body functions they're performing in that time. And during our investigation, we can place them under the see-through container so we can watch what's going on. Now, we can't do this investigation with just one worm. We really need a big pile of them. So here we have about 100 mealworms. So let's use our scale to record their starting mass. First, we can eliminate the mass of our container using the tear function. And we see that the starting mass of our worms is 3.98 grams. Our mealworms have to eat, so let's give them some pieces of potato. It's actually one of their favorite foods. So here we can see that the mass of our potato is 12.87 grams. Now what we can do is put the potatoes and mealworms together in the same container, place a little neutral BTB next to them, we know it's neutral because it's green, and then put them all under our clear container. And then we'll leave them alone for about 24 hours. So while the mealworms do their thing, let's take a moment to make some predictions. What do you think will happen to the BTB? Do you think it will turn blue, basic, yellow, acid, or stay green, neutral? 
What about the mass of the mealworms? Do you think their mass will increase, decrease, or just stay the same? At this point, go ahead and pause the video and make some predictions about what you think we'll observe. If we are patient, we'll observe that our BTB has changed from green to yellow. We can also record how the masses of the potatoes and the mealworms have changed. Let's start with the potatoes. Here we see that the potatoes now have a new mass of exactly 10 grams. If we record the new mass of the mealworms, we find that their mass is 5.68 grams. Now anytime that there's a mass change, we can find the change in mass by taking the second mass and subtracting the first mass. The worms had a final mass of 5.68 grams, and their starting mass was 3.98 grams, which means that their change in mass was plus 1.70 grams. They got heavier. If we perform the same mathematics for the potatoes, we find that their change in mass was negative 2.87 grams. That means the potatoes lost mass. At this point, let's summarize our data using a table. Um, not that kind of table. Let's put together an evidence-based argument table. Across the top, we'll identify the question that we're trying to answer, the observation that we made, and the conclusion that we can draw based on that observation. And on the leftmost column, we'll identify our questions, starting with the matter movement question, followed by the matter change question, and then let's also add the energy question. As far as the matter movement question, we saw that the mass of the mealworms increased and at the same time, the mass of the potatoes decreased. As far as the matter change question, we saw that the BTB changed from green to yellow, which means it must have become more acidic. And as far as the energy question, what we really observed was that the mealworms were moving. They had movement energy. So we've included all of our observations in our evidence-based argument table. At this point, pause the video and think about what conclusion you can draw from each one of our observations. So let's come to some conclusions and see how they match yours. Since the mealworms increased in mass and the potatoes decreased in mass, it's most logical to assume that the mealworms got their added mass from the potato. It's also logical to assume that because we saw the BTB turning yellow and acidic, that means that carbon dioxide entered the BTB. It must have come from the worms. So as far as energy, we watch the mealworms moving. So it's natural to ask, where did that energy come from? Well, really the only source of energy in the system was the potatoes. So it's natural to conclude that the mealworms changed the potatoes' chemical energy into movement energy. So here we've concluded our evidence-based argument table, and this is fantastic because it gets us a lot closer to our goal of being able to model what happens when an animal eats food. So let's model what's happening by using our conclusions. So inside of our transparent dish, we had our worms. We also had their food, the potato. And we concluded that the mealworms got their added mass from the potato, so let's model that. The mealworms and potatoes were not the only things in the system. We also had our BTB, and that started off green, and then it changed to yellow, and we concluded that this meant that carbon dioxide was coming from the worms and entering the BTB. The last thing we need to model is what's going on with energy. We saw movement energy in the worms. And we concluded that that movement energy was really coming from chemical energy in the potato. The worms were converting the chemical energy in their food into movement energy. So here is our complete model of what happens at the macroscopic scale when an animal eats food. Let's review our goal to make sure that we met it. After watching this video, you should be able to model what happens at the macroscopic scale when an animal eats food. If you are unable to do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you don't understand. But remember that science is not just about answers, it is also about questions. Mm -hmm. So what are some questions that you still have about what happens when animals eat food? At this point, pause the video and come up with some questions that interest you. Here are some questions that we came up with. 
What are the cells inside of the mealworm doing? How does the potato's energy change from chemical to movement energy? And what nanoscopic events are happening inside the mealworm? Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.